Who's with us? Shah Galani on remote. I think he's in Baltimore. I think he's got problems with the Baltimore. snow trying Beautiful to get to Baltimore. New York. <laughs> David Barnes, who lives in California, he's kind of a bi-coastal guy. Well, he's with us this morning in New York. <laughs> Liz McDonald, of course. No. You've got a new name, Evening Edit, Liz McDonald. Yes, that's, that's true. Good. Thank you for that. Ashley Webster, of course, Good right morning. here. Right, the Dow's what, a thousand points away from the all-time high? Mm -hmm. Shah, my feeling is this market just wants to go up. Where am I going wrong? You're not going wrong. It's, it's been acting that way. It's acting as if it's going to try and make new highs. It's got a pretty good shot at it. Everything is lining up. Earnings are coming in very well. And I think with the Fed on the sidelines, there's no reason, there's nothing, there's no great impediment in the market's way other than China. And I, I've said on your show that we will get some kind of deal. I think it'll be a superficial deal. I don't think it's going to be a deep deal, but it's going to be enough to move the market higher. If we don't get that, then... Who knows what happens in the bottom could Fair drop point. out, but we but should get something. We should get something. Wait, like Goldman you. Sachs and Bank of America, to Shah's point, are saying, wow, that government shutdown freak out in the media was a buy on the dip strategy. They're finding that consumer sentiment, retail spending were hit when people saw the shutdown and that what media were saying about the effect on the stock market. Why? Because more middle class people own stocks. So the, the freak out happened, people shut down on spending temporarily and then it bounced back. Market just wants to go up? Yeah, I mean, right now, I think the Fed getting out of the way has allowed the market to go into more fundamental mode, earnings, uh, the overall economic growth. To your point, though, is I think that the other piece we didn't really think about with consumer spending is it was the first year in nine years people were getting their 401k statement mm. on the year and it was down. Yeah. And so for that middle class investor, there's more democratization of oh. stock ownership. That's the point, right. Yeah. Mm. I think and, that, and that hit spending. It was all connected with retail sales. So okay. it's interesting. But we bounced back very nicely in 2019. Very nice. Yeah. That's okay, uh, I've got to find out why gold is on such a tear. Shah, you got any good ideas? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, it's, it's cyclical. Gold is a very cyclical asset class. And what's happened now, we're coming up on a five-year cycle. This is the intermittent cycle within a five-year cycle. And we're coming back to 1350, which is where there's tremendous resistance. So it had a pretty free hand to go up there. And then recently we had an extra push with the fact that the dollar dipped a little bit on account of the fact that the Federal Reserve no longer destined to guarantee it's going to raise rates. So a weaker dollar is better for the price of gold. It makes it cheaper in foreign currency. Mm. That gives it a little lift. How high it can go from here? I don't know. 1350, it's going to see a lot of resistance. It's got to break out from there. Okay, hold on a second. I've got some head shaking going on. David Barnes <laughs> to my left here. Yeah, Quickly, I, I, I agreed with, with Shaw so emphatically on his first answer when we started the segment. And on that one, I'm just totally off. I don't believe that anyone can tell you why gold does what it does ever. Because the dollar goes up, gold goes up, dollar goes up, gold goes down. And vice versa. It hasn't traded with a rhyme or reason for 10 years. I'll tell you why it's going up. Ooh. Come on, come Ooh. on, let's hear it. What because is it? of chaos in British politics. Well, that's Three certainly Conservatives left the yes. government today, seven Labour Party eight. members left the yeah. uh, eight it's left the Labour Party. Utter chaos mm. in a major economy. Interesting. Deathly silent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got to so, move on. Come on, let's go. Uh, I, I can't mess around with gold too long. I mean, uh, I, don't I, have any. Have. <laughs> I don't have any gold. I've got some. I've got gold coins for the grandkids. There you, there you go. Uh, Walmart. Okay. Uh, very strong earnings yesterday. Only pulling back a little on the market this morning. I say that's a great economic indicator. I think that it's a great thing for those of us who own Walmart. But you have to remember, Walmart generally does very well when the economy is not good. Only stock in the Dow up in 2008. Walmart. Okay, okay but look, interesting. Yeah. The, the sales were terrific. Their e-commerce is on fire. This is a yeah. real yeah. threat to Amazon. Yeah. I don't yeah. understand why people don't see that. It's a real threat to yeah. Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll leave it at that. But I think it's an economic indicator. In the yeah, fourth quarter of last year, this economy was doing very, very well. They have well. pricing power. Much. They can do well in both economies. Yeah. It's all weather. I agree with you. And I think they can do well even when the economy is not doing well. All right. Uh, I think we're on the same page, Barnson. All right. <laughs> so far, so good. British regulators may block a proposed deal between Walmart and a grocery rival, Sainsbury. What's the problem? Because they'd be too big. They'd be the biggest uh, grocery chains ah. uh, uh, out there in the UK. They say prices will go up, quality will go down. They'll have 27% of market share. 
The Brits don't like that. Okay. Uh, at the moment, the market is uh, on pause. We're, uh, let's see, we're seven points higher for the Dow Industrials, just a tad below 25,900. Better profit, higher profit at Lazy Boy. The stock's up 7%. CVS, not so rosy forecast. When you do that, the market takes you to the cleaners. Down 8% on CVS. Big company, big stock, down 8 Different story at oil and gas producer Devon Energy. They gave a rosy forecast, and consequently, they're up 11%. The price of oil this morning, where are we? 53, 54, 55, 81 per barrel. But look at the price of gas. Ouch. Now it's 236. It was in the 225 range for yeah. so long, wasn't it? Oh, oh well. well. I cashed in when it was at you 225. Did. Haven't <laughs> driven since. <laughs> the trading firm, Glen, Glencore. It's a commodities company, okay? The, they used to be a big backer of coal. Now they plan to put a cap on their coal output. They want to go greener. Is that a good strategy, Liz? Well, the market analysts are saying, watch what's going on in Germany. It's not a good strategy. Germany was going to nix and cancel all of its nuclear power plants. It can't. It was left stranded, empty-handed. It needs fuel. It needs coal to support its, the people's electricity needs in Germany. Coal fires utility plants. So Germany is still relying on coal. That's a, that is a warning shot to the, the green movement. Yeah, you know, the stock's you, up, though. If you're going to try to get rid of nuclear power, you've got to have something to replace it pretty quickly. And <laughs> now they're turning to coal. Skeptical, I David. I just, it sure would be interesting if Germany could buy natural gas from the United States. Oh, wouldn't that be good about that? Wouldn't that be an idea? Wouldn't it be great if we could ship the natural gas by pipeline from Pennsylvania through New York State to the ports and then send it over to Germany? Up. Uh, we can't do that. That, that might even employ a lot of people. And who brought that up? Because Russia. you can't have a pipeline with natural gas going across New York oh, State. Yeah, oh, right. what a shame. But remember the president brought that up with Angela Merkel yes. sitting there? <laughs> Good. Don't get it from Russia. <laughs> Tesla, a couple of stories. Uh, Elon Musk hits send on his Twitter account too soon about Tesla's forecast for 2019 production, had to revisit it later and walk back his production <laughs> estimate. Uh, they're also talking about uh, employees at Tesla might be able to lease Model 3. It's all minor league stuff. The stock is still at $300 a share. It's Teflon, David. Yeah, it is Teflon. It's a, what we call a cult stock. The people that believe in it believe in it so much. They're not in it for it to go from 300 to 350 They're in it for it to go from 300 to 1000 The problem with Tesla is that it is a very binary outcome. It is either going to win spectacularly at some point or lose spectacularly. The risk, in my opinion, as a company that doesn't make any money and all these other issues, questionable, management maturity. Right. Is that an okay term? Maturity. I think that uh, it's not something we would ever touch. I talk about it on the show a lot. Right. But those, those holders in the equity, they're not worried about anything I just said. All they know is if this thing goes and Tesla sort of reconstitutes the way we get electrical yeah. batteries and all that, it's a $1,000 stock. They're true believers. They are. Here's a good story. <laughs> Amazon turning to the Lord of the Rings. They're trying to turn it into a TV series. Yeah. The Hollywood Reporter says that security is extremely tight. The show's writers are being kept in a secure room, no natural light to prevent leaks. <laughs> It's a bit dramatic. Well, they it? have the whole storyboard for the whole season up there on the wall. And they, they, what the lengths they're going to is really interesting. They're putting tape over the windows. You have a security guard outside. And you have to get a, have a fingerprint security uh, entrance to get in. So <laughs> they're really protective. I mean, Lord of the Rings is a really exciting series. And it has a huge fan base around the world. I wonder what would make Amazon worried about something leaking to the media, like a tabloid or something. <laughs> yes. It's really kind of interesting. It <laughs> is. <laughs> Think about Good that. Good one, Bob. Oh, David, that was good. That was smooth. Get right in there, lad.